Hazardous materials falls into those, you know, those horror story categories um, where there's all kinds of things that can happen to you um, as, it, as regards hazardous materials. And, and specifically, we're talking here about uh, petrochemicals. And uh, once, a, you know, once again, the process of looking at a site, it can look perfectly good, but uh, only when you start digging around, literally, will you discover that you have you know, petrochemical issues. Now, for the most part, this has been taken care of. Uh, probably 10 or 15 years ago, we dealt with a number of, of veterinarians that were buying used uh, gas station sites. And uh, they were a hot commodity. And you could get a good deal on them. Uh, you know, they were always on a, on a corner. Um, and they were relatively modest in size, but, but big enough for a, for a clinic. Uh, but when you started digging around, literally, you would discover that they, they had tanks in the ground still, or, the, or what was even more disturbing would be to have tanks that would have been pulled out, but the, the ground hadn't been fixed, hadn't been cleaned up. So you could have a, still have a spill there that, um, that you know, could impact uh, you know, what, you're, what you're doing in terms of building. Now, years ago, uh, the, the, back in this particular same period of time, um, the deal was whoever was the last one to own the site was responsible for the cleanup. So as an example, if you were to go into a, a, a gas station and you were to buy the site, and it turned out that you had a $100,000 mitigation process, and you spent $100,000 for the site, you could be literally out the $100,000. So that's changed. But even if that isn't quite the same situation, it still can be a gigantic delay as you uh, litigate this issue, because you'll get caught in, in a big battle. And for one, your bank will not want to touch anything that has uh, hazardous material on it. They will not get anywhere near uh, a project like that. So they'll walk from it. They'll, they'll just leave you hanging. So you don't want to get into that situation. Um, and it can be relatively simple things that, that can, that can uh, tank the process. Um, it isn't just petrochemicals, it's, it's even things like uh, dry cleaning chemicals. So uh, a few years ago we were working on a site in Colorado and uh, there was a, a plume of, of uh, petrocarbons of some weird breed. We weren't too sure what it was and did some more research and it was a, it was a plume of dry cleaning fluids that had traveled about a half mile uh, down this, this riverbed uh, and had then uh, pocketed themselves in our site. Now, we weren't responsible for that pollution, and it really wasn't our problem, uh, but we inherited it, or we could have inherited it. And so, uh, luckily, we were able to sidestep the issue. But, um, you know, when you're, when you're looking at your soil report, and this is one reason why you need to, you know, to paw through your soil report carefully. Um, uh, you know, what you'll do is you'll, you might find on your core samples that uh, there's an indication of petrochemicals. And this might be a footnote on page 22B, and, and you don't really think much about it. But you need to have enough sense to think, you know, we've got to check this thing out and, and dig deeper. And, uh, and if you do see any indication, any indication at all, then uh, you need to really dial in there and look at it. Uh, in most places, a level one environmental study will identify uh, these issues. So um, if you have any reason to, to expect this or suspect this, then you need to order this up. And uh, most particularly if you're in an urban situation, you know, if you're out there in the middle of the cornfields, the chances of it being a, a, a Superfund site are pretty unlikely. But let's say you're back in New Haven, Connecticut, and you're in downtown area, and this, this particular site's been occupied by 17 buildings before you, well, then you need to dig down and find out, you know, are there hazardous chemicals uh, in this uh, situation?